in that same year in 2017, yeah. further on in question 5, is the mix of your algebra, um, so long division, and then differentiation or your calculus. So the function f is such that it's equal to that, a cubic function. Here it's going to be that sort of shape of a function. Show that x is equal to minus 3 is a root. So the first bit, show that it's root. In order to show that it's a root, this here value is on the function. So just sub it in. And when that occurs, Zero is equal to zero, therefore x equal to minus three is a root. And find the other two roots, so that's like the second bit. Now if x equal to minus three is a root, and the factor of that is x plus three. If you think of your quadratic, if you got down to x squared plus seven, x plus 12, and your factor is x plus four and x plus three. If you wanted to find the roots of that, you let each bit equal to zero, let each factor equal to zero, you get x equal to minus four, x equal to minus three. So here we're working in reverse. Got a root. And let's get your factor. So just go back up. So if x equal to minus three is a root, that implies that x plus three is a factor. And if we have one of the factors, we simply long divide to find the other factors. Now, an x squared function will have two factors or two roots. An x cubed function will have three factors. So do your long division. Now you might do your box method or whatever, I just do simple long division. And just say to yourself, what do you multiply x by 2x cubed? 2x squared. Look at that down. Draw the line, change the signs. There you go. What do you multiply x by? You get minus x squared, minus x. Multiply it down. Draw the line, change the signs. The same steps repeating themselves. And what do you multiply x by? You get minus x, minus 1. Multiply it down. Draw the line, change the signs. And they disappear. So we're left with this quadratic. In order to find the other two roots of that, you're going to have to solve this here. So when you're solving your quadratic, they go to zero. And you get minus x minus two x plus one x. Again, solve your quadratic whatever way you like, using your box method or turn it into grouping. And then let each factor equal zero. So that means your roots, your three roots of the cubic function are x equal to minus a half, x equal to one, and x equal to minus three. We're given that. Now the next bit of that, find the coordinates of the local maximum point and the local minimum point. Maximum and minimum. Now if it was a quadratic function, you could do a complete square. But the easiest way, once you see maximum or minimum or turning points or stationary points, you know you're going to find the derivative. So find your derivative, or dy dx, let it equal to zero, or f dash x, let it equal to zero. So our function, on the previous page, you see there was 2x cubed. dy dx that, differentiate that, so multiply down by the power, 3 times 2 is 6. Just the power by 1. So 10x minus 4. Let that equal to 0. So we're going to solve that quadratic. Um, we can do your minus b formula. You can simplify that there actually by dividing everything by 2. We have 3x squared. And then we put up your brackets. So multiply to give us a minus. And then just let each bit equal to zero once again. Now 
So technically it says find the coordinates. So we have two coordinates here for your maximum and your minimum point. For a coordinate you need an x and a y. Now where else do you see your y? Is this y? No, that's your derivative or slope. Your y is up here, the original function given on the previous page. So what you've got to do is sub in each of these terms individually into your fx and find your y coordinate from that. So f a third. You get a value there. For this one, do the same. Two answers. I'm just going to look at the back of the book here. Save a bit of time. Everyone knows how to put numbers in the calculator. And we see when we put in minus two, we get nine. So minus two, nine. And we put in a third, we get a minus 100 over 27. So it doesn't look great. Now for this one, the maximum point, the maximum point's obviously going to be the higher up point, the higher y value, the greater the y value. So the two points that we have here, getting a bit messy, this and this, this, which one has the higher y value? The y value here is 9. So that's going to be your local maximum point, minus 2, 9. While your local minimum point is a third, minus 100 over 27. And then the last thing, f of x, which is your original function, plus a, so plus a number, has only one real root. Once you see one real root, that means it cuts the x-axis at one point. So find the range of possible values, so values here again, suggestion, two answers of a. Um, so if you were to sketch your your cubic function, we said the roots was minus a half, there you go, minus a half, one, and minus three. It had a maximum point at minus two now, just a rough sketch, minus two now, and it had a minimum point of a third, minus 100 over 27, somewhere down there, it's a negative thing. So your rough sketch of your cubic, Like I don't know where, I didn't calculate where it cuts the y-axis or the x-axis or anything. Now, if it only has one real root, it's only going to cut the axis at one place. So I either shift it all up or move it all down. Now say if I wanted to move it all down, so this point here was somewhere down here. At the minute, it's at 9. If I wanted to move that entirely down, my value has to be... Um, less than minus 9 because if it was say minus 8 I'm still down here uh, 1 but I must get it down below that x-axis thinking about the other side I'm here at minus 100 over 27 in order to get that up so I have a function that kind of looks like only cutting the axis in one place. That's what we want with one root. Our value must be bigger than minus 100 over 27. Not bigger than or equal to, although it'll be, otherwise it'll be the same. Um, it'll be a repeated root. Yeah.